This clinical case study demonstrates a class two restoration using a dual shade technique, courtesy of Dr. Abuderam from France. The products used include dentin and enamel opacities of 3MSB Filtex Supreme Ultra Universal Restorative. With a full range of shades in four opacities, excellent polish, and an outstanding chameleon effect, Filtex Supreme Ultra Restorative provides excellent aesthetics, whether using a single, dual, or multi-shade technique. Formulated with 3MSB's true nanotechnology, this composite delivers superb polish retention for anterior aesthetics and excellent wear resistance for posterior durability. In vitro lab data has shown it has a wear resistance equivalent to Filtex Supreme Plus Universal Restorative, which has been proven to wear like enamel in a five-year clinical study measuring occlusal contact wear. In the following case, Dr. Abuderam presents the restoration of a premolar that was exhibiting primary caries, as diagnosed through radiographic and visual observation. Use of a sectional matrix system is described, along with a composite placement technique that results in a restoration with functional contact and optimum marginal seal. A dual shade technique using dentin and enamel opacities of Filtex Supreme Ultra Universal Restorative was used to closely mimic the natural appearance of the tooth. A bite wing film of the second and third quadrant of a 25 year old patient revealed caries on the upper second premolar, which may have led to a pulpectomy. This cavity needed cautious cleaning in order to preserve pulp vitality. The caries revealed during x-ray examination was able to be confirmed clinically by some loss of enamel translucency. The extent of the decay revealed by the x-ray film justified splitting off the unsupported marginal crest. After removal of the unsupported marginal crest, the extent of the cavity was revealed. The origin of the decay was the dissolved enamel at the contact point. Cleaning of the cavity was finished manually with an excavator. In this step, quality of the tissue was also checked. Humid air abrasion was used to finish the cavity preparation. Pulverization with aluminum oxide and water was used for the final cleaning. This step helped achieve the proper surface for adhesive application on the dentin and enamel. Next, a rubber dam was placed for cavity isolation, which is recommended for composite filling placement. A sectional matrix band was placed to define the proximal wall and the contact point. Note that the size of the matrix should be chosen according to the height of the proximal wall of the cavity. The upper limit of the matrix must be positioned exactly at the level of the marginal crest of the adjacent tooth. A wooden wedge was then placed between the two adjacent teeth at the gingival limit in order to flatten the matrix band against the gingival limit. Placement of the wedge is essential in order to obtain physiological movement of the teeth. When the restoration is complete and the wedge is removed, the teeth will migrate to their initial position and a functional contact point will be obtained. The matrix band was kept in place by the matrix retainer. Considering the depth of the cavity and the pulp proximity, a self-etch adhesive was used. At this stage, if desired, a liner such as Vitrobond Plus Light Cure Glass Ionomer could be placed on the pulpal floor, followed by a self-etch or total etch adhesive system. Here, the adhesive was applied with a micro brush and the layer was air thinned. Then it was light cured for 20 seconds. In order to restore the natural look of the tooth, two shades and opacities were used, dentin shade A2D and enamel shade A1E. A first increment of enamel shade A1E was carefully placed in the proximal box at the cervical cavo surface margin to ensure a well-adapted marginal seal. A second increment of enamel A1E was placed in order to restore the entire proximal surface. To flatten the composite against the matrix band, a microbrush was used, similar to the one used for the application of the adhesive. The matrix system was removed. Two successive increments of dentin shade A2D were placed and light cured. The dentin shades were used to mimic the look of the natural dentin. An oblique layering technique was used to minimize shrinkage stresses. The final increment of enamel shade A1E was placed and shaped in order to achieve the occlusal anatomy. Note, the goal in this step is to apply only as much composite as needed to sculpt the restoration to as near final contour as possible. 
This practice minimizes additional finishing with carbide or diamond burrs. A cone-shaped hand instrument was used on the last increment in order to carve the dental fissures and pits. After final curing, composite excess was noted on the buccal and palatal surfaces. This excess was eliminated with medium and fine Softlex contouring and polishing discs. The discs were also used for finishing and polishing the marginal crest. The marginal seal was finished and polished with Softlex finishing strips. The occlusal limit was then finished with white Arkansas stone pumices mounted on an angle handpiece. A silicone pumice completed the initial polish of the restoration. Final polishing was achieved using a brush and silicon carbide. Occlusion was checked after removing the rubber dam. In this case, no occlusal corrections were needed. The final view of the restoration lets us appreciate the morphology and perfect mimetics of the composite. A post-op checkup conducted eight days after the treatment revealed the restoration after complete tooth rehydration. Notice how using two opacities of Filtex Supreme Ultra Universal Restorative, Dentin and Enamel to replace missing tooth structure resulted in a restoration that perfectly mimics the natural appearance of the tooth. For more information on restorative techniques or Filtex Supreme Ultra Universal Restorative, contact 3MSB's Customer Care Center or visit www.3msb.com slash Filtech.